yes we are live now so can you ma'am we can start yes sir. okay okay sir. thank you okay so once again good evening and here we go national curriculum framework for foundational stage 2022 uh, respected teachers before uh, our respected participants those of you who are present let me tell you that before we before i start let me tell you that the presentation that you are seeing right now in front of you is actually a very very important work by ncert okay i have not met i have not prepared this uh, ppta okay i have received it as a trainer i have received it from ncert and i am using this because this is how we conduct the training program so the credit doesn't go to me in preparing it but definitely uh, i i will be explaining i will be discussing with you all because the way i have been taught in the same way i will also help you to get the information okay now what exactly is the national curriculum framework what is exact what exactly is this see we have we have the uh, we have this national uh, national educational uh, this thing what you call the policies okay we have the policy the policy is what what is that policy exactly it is uh, the rules and regulations the system the government prepares in consultation with all the educationalists across the country even maybe sometime we take international help also and that's how we make the policies now how those policies will be implemented how those policies that the government will prepare huh, how they will be implemented huh, for the educational part that that comes under the national educa curriculum framework now it is a framework it's not that there are hard and fast rules over here given which has to be followed it's not exactly like that okay the rules the regulations the systems the guidance the advice the suggestions everything is given in this curriculum framework now it is the duty of the different types of uh, the, the boards the councils like cbsc or say for example cisc or the national or, or the state boards they will follow the guidelines they can modify the guidelines according to their needs they can customize the guidelines according to their needs according to the situation according to the location of the school places according to the deals that they have with their own system and all so that's how it will go but the basics will always remain with the national curriculum framework curriculum you know what the curriculum the 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 very the very system by which uh, we make our children study learn and understand and this is just that framework so this is something that one should know i am asked by teachers across the country sir what is the difference between uh, this uh, national curriculum framework and national education policy or is there uh, all are interlinked with each other but there definitely there are there are certain certain differences are there and remember that this is just a guideline okay it's not that hard and fast rule that you have to exactly go like this if you go it's okay if you don't go also if you just want to modify it according to your needs then also you can do it okay that is what the flexibility is there from the uh, from ncrt from the government to make things according to your own ways and means okay uh just somebody is uh, this thing Please uh, don't go for these things because uh, this annotations and all these writings, they no, they just spoil the entire system. Okay, let's move forward. Just a minute. Okay. Uh, in the last program also, we had a we had a total and complete discussion on national education policy 2020 very quickly. Because, you know, very quickly we will see it once again. Because until and unless we don't see it, we'll not be able to move forward. A base is always needed. Whenever we, in, a, in the classrooms also, whenever we start a chapter, we just recapitulate what we studied in the previous classes. So that's what we will do. Okay. So the NEP 2020 says that the this policy envisages the 10 plus 2 system. We, we are removing ourselves from the 10 plus 2 system. And we are coming to another system, which is known as 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Okay, currently the children in the age group of three to six are not covered in the 10 plus two structure. It was not done previously, but now in the new structure, that is the new five plus three plus three plus four structure, a strong base of early childhood care education is needed. Respected teachers, those of you who are very senior teachers, those of you who are working uh, for the last 20 or 25 years, you will definitely agree that if you look at this particular part, you know, the base part, was not it was in a very unorganized way okay it was in the unorganized sector it was not that much strong different schools different policies were there for different school the way the schools themselves used to run the system in a different way so there were there were a lot of lot of limitations were there because of which 
in the latter part we found in the latter part we found that the dropout rates of the children were too much we have some alarming statistics from various sources uh, which ncrt has received and we have alarming statistics that till class 5 students used to uh, there used to be 100% at uh, admissions and all but after that the uh, the percentage used to go down why because those children who were admitted at the basic level may not have received the quality education and could not convert uh, with the further education that's why there were dropouts so now the government is saying that let us change the system let us go for a more concrete one right from the base students should be knowing they should know they should the knowledge should gather of course in their in their particular way it's not that okay we'll we'll go on mugging and jugging them like that it's not like that there's a very good system we will see that system so that's why we have the foundational stage which consists of that five years the five strong years of the foundational stage uh, that is the anganwadi the preschool the balvatika nursery lkg ukg whatever you want to call it then after that we have class 1 and class 2 this is the foundation stage most of the study over here will be on play based a little bit of learning will take place let the children feel this thing after that we'll have the preparatory test uh, the, the preparatory stage that is uh, stage uh, that is we are calling it the stage uh, that three years that is from class three to class five age group is eight to 11 years then we have the another three years of that is the second part of class three that is class six to eight where which is known as the middle school and finally we'll move to the secondary school that is that last four years of education and up to 18 years of age children will be studying in education the entry level is three years by the time the child is in class six his or her age should be six this has been put previously it was it used to be four or sometimes five now all these will be now removed okay so this is the basics okay now the national curriculum framework the national curriculum framework foundational stage to stage what exactly is this what is this foundational stage see first of all five years of flexible multi-level play and activity based learning for children from age group of three to eight Research from various corners of the world dealing with education has found that instead of putting the things right at the beginning, huh, uh, making the inculcating uh, unnecessary unnecessary curriculum into the minds of the children right from class, uh, from the age of three is not a very good practice. Let them have a very flexible life. Let them be free. Let them feel. Let them touch. Let them play. Let them understand. And that is why from the age of three to age of five in the first phase of his it will be totally uh multi-level play and activity based learning Alakananda, somebody not has raised a hand sir we will discuss everything at the end okay right now it will become a bit difficult to discuss otherwise we won't be able to complete it second is based on cutting edge research from across the world just now as i told you because after this, we came or, or say say the policymakers came to this particular conclusion after doing a lot of research on human beings, on how human beings interact with each other at a very at a very young stage from a very small stage how they interact with each other on the basis of that the framework has been made on the basis of that the learning the teaching learning processes have been made how children react how you or better to say how human beings react and they say now that till the age of six the brain start brain goes on maturing and developing until the age of six a, ch a child is capable of taking everything after that things goes in a different way so that is why okay we start right from a very young age the third point is rooted in india's deep tradition and, and knowledge the framework is made in such a way the system will be made in such a way that definitely we will take the help of international writers internal authors international research person we will go international so but definitely definitely our own traditions our own knowledge of our own countries everything should be incalculated into this otherwise uh, the the nation will lose nation will lose its own identity so that is why we say you know that our new education policy is very much international at the same time rooted with indian ethos yesterday we discussed about last time we discussed about it and the fifth point is guide for teachers somebody is doing something guide for teachers and other practice seniors there will be continuous monitoring of teachers who are continuously professional development will take place because the way the new system will work you know 
it will it just cannot go uh, by giving uh, uh, giving one training a year or maybe whatever teachers know with that that old type of thinking it will go no it will not go in that way it will go regularly and on a regular basis the teachers will be trained that is why cbsc or better to say that's why the government of india along with ncrt has came out with this new rule that each and every teacher irrespective of his or her status and all have to take 50 hours of training 50 hours of professional development should take place so that the, the it also discusses about the guides uh, for the teachers and the practitioners and the last point enables a holistic development of all our children across the institution schools anganwadis malwadikas preschool wherever whatever will be discussed everything will go in a holistic manner complete total total education will be given not only the education of the books not only in order to get a certificate but to make a complete human being and we schools we have been thriving ever since uh, the system has come in uh, right from the those golden old days that our main motto is what to create human beings to make good human beings in my school i i very clearly i tell the parents that i i cannot give you a guarantee that i will make your son or a daughter a doctor or engineer or a lawyer or a chartered accountant i cannot give that guarantee but definitely, definitely, I will give you a guarantee that I will make him or her a very good human being. And if he or she becomes a very good human being, rest of the things will automatically come. But if, and some of the, uh, when, if, when some of the parents insist me, no, sir, if you don't give the guarantee, then how will I go with the, with my child's education? Over? I'll, okay, come on, let's come to the office and reverse the process. There's, there's no such thing. So main focus is to make human beings. So this is the first ever integrated curricular framework for children from the ages of 3 to 8 in our country. And remember, we are talking about the foundational stage. The others will come time to time. The process of developing the NCF, how this NCF was developed, how it came into being. This is, you know, so first of all, extensive consultations across the country were taken. Respected teachers, if you, uh, if you can recollect, you know, since 2015, government of India, NCRT, CBSC used to occasionally used to send us some uh, circulars, okay, or they used to send us some questionnaires time to time asking us about to, what type of changes should be brought into the system, into the education system. If you can remember the senior teachers who, who were teaching uh, from 2015 who are teaching or before that they must have remembered that we used to get we used to get different types of questionnaire from cbsc time to time or from cisc or from government of india or from ncrt in our schools and we used to give our ideas we used to give our ideas okay this is the way it should go that is the way it should go you know actually all those ideas were taken into consideration okay they were compiled and from there the the best ones were taken out and formulated into this in NCF. Focus groups formed by 32 states and union territories over 4,000 experts. Okay, so first, the from the grassroots level, from the teachers level, uh, it was taken. Later, later these 4,000 experts from various union territories and states, they all sat together and they discussed everything. Okay. Then the views from over 1.3 lakh teachers and institutions were collected. Yes, the one just from 2015, 2015, this work started. And I myself remember, I, I personally remember this, that to me also in my school also, I received it and I personally wrote a few things and I have sent it to CBSC. So like that many of you have done. So 1.3 lakh teachers, uh, teachers and from institutions, their views were taken, their ideas were taken into consideration in order to make sure that the process goes on. And, you know, preparing, preparing a policy, preparing a framework is not an easy work. It's not a matter of joke. It takes a lot of time, a lot of hard labor, a lot of understanding, a lot of collaborations, a lot of thinking and rethinking. And then finally, the experts come out with the most concrete ones which are necessary. So in that way, it was taken. Inputs from over 10 lakh interested citizens, even the common men. The common men also got this. Uh, in newspapers also, the newspapers, they used to give uh, this questionnaire. And they used to ask the common men. So uh, uh, even in internet, it was also there. Sometime in the radios and the televisions, they used to announce to go for all these things. So like that, from various ways and means, the ideas were taken and the process of developing of the NCF 
took place. So it is not that only a few people sitting over there. This one of the one of the best things that I find about this type of this type of work is that it's not that somebody sitting on top over there. They just decide and put everything to us and said, "Okay, this is how the things will go on in the moment." No, when public opinion is taken, when everything is put into the public forum, into the public domain, you know, things become more transparent, okay, and more acceptable. And that's exactly what is happening with the uh, national education policy. Because it has come to the public domain long time ago, and people were, well, general public were discussed about it. And that's why uh, previously, few things were not at all like that. But now it is wonderful. That is why in the last meeting also I have told that this is a landmark document. This is a landmark document, and it is here to stay. Uh, one or two states are not uh, taking it. Well, that is their uh, political agenda is there. I am not a person to discuss about all these things. We will be discussing more about NCA 40. But it is wonderful. Now, about the national curriculum framework, how it is done, you know, national curriculum framework for the foundational state, how it is done. So, first of all, it is developed to enable implementation of the national education policy 2020. It has been developed to enable the policy. The policy is there. The guidelines are there. Now, the guidelines are over here and we have to go through them and we have to apply them in our day-to-day -day work. Okay. It will help to develop diverse curricula in the country. Just now, in just at the beginning, I told you that the framework is there. Framework will give you the ideas and the suggestions, but the curricula can be different in different parts of the country according to the ecosystem of that particular area. So it helps to develop diverse curricula in the country while enabling consonances and harmony across the country and providing the basis for quality and equality. Maybe in West Bengal, it will be a bit different. Maybe in Tamil Nadu, it will be a bit different according to the ecosystem of that particular state, huh? the way the students, uh, maybe in the rural areas, it will be something different, but the basics will remain same. So it will help to develop diverse curricula. Please note these two lines, diverse curricula. These two words are very, very important. Okay. In, when we are enabling it, correct. Right. What is the objective of it? Positively transforming the school education system of India as envisioned in NEP 2020. The vision yesterday, we are in the last program, we saw so the vision is to provide a quality education, holistic education, education based with skill, education based with skill, education based with knowledge, and a positive changes should come uh, in the curriculum, including the pedagogy. The pedagogy that will be prepared should also be more uh, student oriented, you know, Previously, what you used to have, we used to have the teaching as well as the, the teaching as well as the learning process, all were all were teacher oriented. But now it will be student oriented. Exactly what the student demands, that is much more important than what I or you demand as a teacher. What are the characteristics of the national curriculum framework? What are the characters that develop for teachers and practicing seniors in school? It has been developed for the teachers and practitioners of education so that they can use it properly. Lays down the new vision of schools. New world of education is coming. New thinking is coming. Okay. And provides details and guidelines for quality education at foundation stage. Foundation stage is the stage, you know, where in spite of a lot of discussions and a lot of work uh, been uh, taken place, but still the foundation stage is not so strong as it is supposed to be. If it was strong, then we would not have top outs from class five onwards. So characteristics of this NCF is what? It has developed, it is developed for the teachers and practitioners of education. It lays down the new vision for schools. And vision of schools are should and must change continuously. We just cannot live with a same vision for forever in a school because the dynamics of the world changes. Okay. The thinking pattern changes. The system changes. So with the change, the vision should also change. So lays down the new vision every day. Whatever, what vision you had five years ago, the school had, school cannot move with that same vision anymore because the dynamics of the world have changed. And it provides details and guidelines for quality education at the foundation stage. So this is what the National Curriculum Framework is providing us. Let's see a little more. Fundamental principles of the National Curriculum Framework. What are the fundamental, on the basis of, you can say, the pillars on which the National Curriculum Framework for the foundation stage is resting. Okay, the first thing is every child is capable of, le of learning. Please remember this. Every child is capable of learning irrespective 
of from where the child is coming, whatever is his or her so social status, ethnic background, or whatever, whatever. In the last program, in the last program, I uh, I got a very beautiful message from uh, one of the teacher, one of the very senior teachers. Uh, I cannot recollect her name, but I, I don't know if Madam is present today or not. But she gave a very good definition. She said that, sir. Whatever is the condition of the students, we must bring them to the school and we must make them learn. Uh, sorry, ma'am, if you are there, you just give me a thumbs up. If you're there, then I will understand that you uh, you were there that day and you are present today also. That was one of the best one uh, best uh, that uh, reply I got on that day. Yes, every child is capable of learning. You know, every child. We sometimes say, you know, this, uh, uh, some, uh, some so-called standard schools who, who claim to be very standard, they sometimes don't take the children in their school. They reject them. No, 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 no. It's, it should not be like that. If the child is nearby to the school, admit the child. Let the child study because every child is capable of learning. And, you know, the next thing is that if you go down the bottom, children learn best when they are respected, valued, fully involved and in the learning process. So first of all, we have to keep this thing in mind. That is what NCM is, that every child is capable of learning. And second thing is that the child should be respected. The child should be valued and the child should be fully involved in the learning process and automatically they will learn. You know, love, care, dedication, sympathy, empathy. These are the wonderful qualities that we all teachers have with us. If we just implement them, then nobody can stop us from making a child, a child whom once upon a time was thought to be, once upon a time was thought to be incapable of doing something will definitely come out with flying colors. Families and schools are partners in children's learning. The second thing the government is saying that NCF is saying, let the parents as well as the teachers both involve jointly together, then only the learning process will continue. And I will tell you to a great extent, the interest of the parents play a very vital role in developing a child's career. A child progresses and develops, huh? a child progresses and develops huh? when a lot of parental care is also taken. Care is cent central to learning. First and foremost thing that we all as teachers, as educators in the school should do is that we have to take tremendous care for the children. We just simply cannot neglect them. Okay. And for the heck of doing the work, we are not supposed to do the work. If anybody thinks that, no, I'm just doing the work to earn money and all, I am least bothered about what the child is learning or not learning. Okay. Then I will tell those people, please, for God's sake, don't be in the profession. Such a different profession. Continuous opportunities for children to experience, explore, and experiment with the environment and are important for learning. Let the child, why the first stages are only, why the first five years are only play and activity based only. Let the child feel, let the child touch, touch, let the child understand, let the child dance, let the child cry, let the child laugh. You know, all aspects of life will get joined with one another. Then the learning process will continue. Continue the opportunities for children to experience. Let them feel. Let them explore. Let leave them in the classrooms. Let the classroom be filled with lot many things and leave them over there. Don't do anything and let them find out what is there and where it is there. Let them do some experiments. This is what they are saying. The next part is that every child is different and grows and learns and develops at their own pace. This also we have to keep it in mind. Yes, every child is different. And every child is unique also. Each and every human being is unique. So every child is different. Every child will grow and learn in their, with their own pace. If we make, make them uh, go into that bandwagon and start uh, pushing them from the back, then this, how, this, this, way, this way or that way, you have to learn it and you have to finish it off. It will never be a successful one. And that used to happen. No, that bugging and jugging. We used to just like, we used to put everything into their mouth and make them understand and that's it and ask them to cope it, that education will not work. It doesn't work at all. Play and activity are the primary ways of learning and developing. Play and activity. If you see over here, uh, play and activity. Let them play. Oh, in Hindi, there is a like, in, uh, in our Bengal, we used to say, khala khala poda. Khel khel me likhai siko. So this is how, what is it. Children learn through observation, imitation, collaboration, and concrete experiences. In the junior sections, we will always find we keep teachers, a respected teacher. I, I think you will agree with me. We always keep, we always make those teachers who are very active, who have a lot of energy. And we purposely tell them that, Madam and Sir, you come well dressed. 
you wear attractive clothes good looking why we say because children children look at those things no they see how colorful the teacher is how active the teacher is the teacher dances the teacher talks the teacher uh, acts and they just imitate them and that is how they work that is how they learn i remember in when i was in class kg we had uh, our teacher her name was mrs mac reddy she passed away from many years ago and the way she used to dance in the class and the way she used to uh, use her body language you know so wonderful that i still remember one or two things of us why because that is how the children learn in the junior sections so this are some of the five these are the basic fundamentals these are the principles on which the ncf is been made the children of the junior section children from age group of 3 to 8 will learn in this way this is five years are very very crucial if we can do it we will be the winners in our life we will make them the winners in the school and eventually for life itself early childhood care and education yesterday in the last one we had uh, we had lot of discussions about it early childhood care and, and lot of work is going on throughout the country lot of workshops are going on lot of seminars webinars training programs are going on and it is necessary for all of us so e c c e or e e square e we call it also e square e now to make it more easy is defined as the care and education of children from birth to 8 years and is on the focus in this ncf so the early childhood care education is the main focal point okay for the first 8 years we will not leave any stone unturned on our to make sure that our children get the best so the first education start e c c is first starts primarily at home okay at home it starts at the house it starts when the child is from 0 to 3 years of age after 3 years government is saying bring the children to the school the foundational stage mostly in the in, and and 3 to 8 years is the foundational stage of learning which is mostly in the institutional settings okay and from here from the institution we get what 3 to 6 years early childhood education is given and 6 to 8 years early primary classes in school that is grade 1 2 and all that goes in the school so e c e starts again in this way the from 0 to 3 years it is in the house where the parents teach the children the basics then the foundational stage of learning comes okay when the when the school the institution teach from the age of 3 to age of 8 and by the time the child children are age of 8 they have reached if we follow the nca properly then you will find that the children have really really lived up to the expectations and the school dropout rate will go down so in the school what happens first to 3 to 6 years early childhood education programs will take place anganwadis the balbatika classrooms so whatever we will prepare it in our own ways and means yeah, they will be customized according to that academic tradition according to the system and 6 to 8 years is also the early primary classes okay so this early primary classes will start class, grade 1 grade 2 so that by the time the child reaches to grade 3 he is he or she is school ready we say it is school ready now no more this play and all these things now what will happen now of course education will go on step by step huh? now more learning will take place the national curriculum framework aims to address the foundational stage in institutional settings within the overall context of ec so how we will develop quality ec leads to what first of all the brain development as we discussed that till the age of 6 the brain develops after that the brain it's not that the brain doesn't grow it grows but you know that maximum catching capacity and all these things children learn up to from the age of 6 up to the age of 6 when they get the opportunity to see exactly what is happening then the school preparedness yeah, ready for school improved learning outcomes once the children comes to the school then the improved learning outcomes takes place yeah. once the learning takes place in the best possible way the school the school uh, learning is completed then that quality of employability is also come now what is they say that we have some lakhs and lakhs of graduates who are not capable of em being employed in any organizations so that means the education system did not come out in that way so we have to make it in this way that they become excellent human resources also you know so that employability quality also when which will eventually lead to overall growth of the country this part is very important why quality early childhood care education is needed why a holistic development is needed the reason is very simple first of all the brain should be developed the way we will prepare that the, the maturity of the brain will develop brain development takes place up to the age of 6 after that no only the catching capacity goes on increasing second is that 
Once that is done, then the child will be prepared for the school, the school preparedness, improved learning outcomes. When the child is in the school, right from say from nursery till standard 12, that learning quality will go on increasing. And the learning quality will be such that the child is capable of being getting the opportunity to be employed, to be used for the nation. He or she will become an excellent human resource for the nation. And if this is there, then there will be overall growth in the country. Because that is the, at the end of the day, uh, we say that the nation has to develop at any cost. We just cannot simply uh, finish off it in uh, for the heck of doing it. The nation has to develop. And that is the that is the primary work of each and every citizen of the, of the country to make sure that the nation develops. And we teachers are play, playing a very, very vital role in developing the nation. Without us, nothing will work. It's as simple as that respected teachers. One thing I will tell you over here, uh, I'm just going a little bit out of the topic. You know, respected teachers, the mentality of parents is like this. And it is a fact. I personally believe that one teacher is equivalent to 100 ordinary men and women. One teacher is equivalent to 100 ordinary men and women. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, parents will come to you only. They will not go to a Baba. They will not go to a Dada. They will not go to a politician. They will not go to an astrologer or a Mata or something. They will come to a teacher and they will tell you, Madam Ji, kuch to bataiye bache ke liye kya kya jaye. Sir Ji, kuch to bolo bache ke liye kya kare. This is a fact. And this is exactly what we are doing. Okay, we'll move forward. Learning standards for the foundational stage of NCF. What are the learning standards? How it will go on? Okay. Clear, if you see this uh, flow down structure, uh, from the aims of education to curricular goals, to competencies, to learning outcomes, each set must be emanate from the immediately higher level while ensuring full coverage of the objectives of the immediately higher level. See, step by step, everything is done. Okay. And we have to go according to those steps. These learning outcomes needs to be seen as enabling guidelines for teachers. The learning outcomes, are, they are the guidelines of teachers. This is what the teachers will exactly apply and use in order to make sure that the NC, the foundational stage becomes very strong and school leaders are not, uh, are not as constraining demands on them. They have the autonomy to reimagine and the learning outcome based on their context. In the beginning, I told you, again, I'm telling you that NCF is just a guideline. They have given the guidelines. You have the full freedom to customize it according to your ways and means. Okay. This thing should be very, very clear with the teachers. It's not that whatever is written over there, you have to, you, so the basics, you will take from there, but you can make it. That's why it is said, these learning outcomes need to be seen as enable guidelines only for the teachers and school leaders and not as a constraining demands on them. That No, you have to do it exactly like this. You all have the autonomy to do so. So NEP 2020 provided aims from the NCF and drafted everything is there. Aims of education, curricular goals, competencies and learning outcomes that we will see. Now, if you see this one, it's a bit uh, printed uh, in a very small letters, but... Uh, the next chart, if you see, competency converts fluently and can hold a meaningful conversation. Now, age three to eight years, what is the main thing? Well, the children at this age, they listen attentively and speaks in short conversations. The initiate conversation should be initiated, started uh, in daily life with peers, with friends, with teachers. Many, many schools I have visited where I have often come across teachers who say, sir, we tell the children, but we are scared whether they understand or not. This is one of the biggest innovations that our uh, teachers have. In many schools, I have heard this. Sir, we tell, we talk to the student, but will they understand English? Will they understand that they are so small? Believe me, teachers, students, do understand. They may not understand the meaning of the word, but the way you depict those things, the way you depict yourself in the class, the way your body language works, the way the sound that comes from your mouth, okay, that which the children get, from there they learn. That's how they learn the language. So listen and uh, attentively, and when you are when you are speaking with a good mood, then children do listen, even if the if the, the naughtiest one will also listen. So initiate conversations in daily life with peers, with friends, teachers, and engages in conversation based on events, stories on on their needs, and ask questions. They will ask questions also as they will grow up. Let the children talk with each other. Sometimes you know, we have those strict rules. 
<laughs> in the schools. Boy, don't talk. You don't talk. Sit over here. Put your heads down. These are the limitations. These things should be removed slowly and slowly. I know sometimes schools, schools classrooms get very disturbing and it becomes very annoying for the teacher. But you know, within those within those disturbances, actually the children are learning. Engage in conversations. Wait for their turn to speak. Uh, speak and let them step by step. This will go on. Okay. An example of learning outcome derived from the competences. Various ways of that they have done it. Okay. Express their needs and their feelings. They will go on expressing their needs, their feelings. They will narrate. The children will narrate their daily stories. You will find children come coming back to you after school. They say, you know, madam, today in the house my mother cooked this, or you know, my this auntie came to the house. Now, what is this? This is what they are narrating their life experiences. From there, we can ask questions also, no? Like, who came? How, what was there in your house? Whatever food your mother cooked? Okay, your relatives came. This is what engagement of understanding and learning. Okay, this is how we learn. I mean, uh, these are some of the processes. It, uh, there are many more. Uh, the teachers who are present today, they know many more, much more things about this. Engagement with non-fictional contents, writing, reading. As they grow up, they will go on saying this. So this is the how. Our aim of education, we have to have curricular goals. We have to find out the competences within the children and ourselves. And we will move forward. What are curricular goals? We talk about curricular goals. First of all, there should be physical development. The body should develop. Children should be taught to eat well. To keep themselves fit and fine. That we, that's why we sometimes uh, ask them to do a little bit of exercise, running, this, that. We tell them, no, beta, aapne dood piye hai. Aapne kitne chapati khaye hai. Fal sabji khate ho na. Because first is physical development. If the body is not strong, the brain will not be strong. And if the overall health is not strong, then how they will move. That is why right from the beginning, we are giving, we are giving lot of, lot of, I mean, all schools, uh, all boards, all schools, all the, all institutions, uh, CBSC, they are giving lot of emphasis, lot of, lot of stress on mental and physical health. So physical development is needed. Which will eventually turn into social and emotional and ethical development. Once they are physically fit, then we have to make them socially fit. They should be emotionally strong and ethics ethically ethics should be developed. And within this, this age, this three to eight years age, only the children will develop all these things. After that, uh, it becomes very difficult for a class 10 child uh, to develop those things. And once the development takes place at the at this level, you know, that will go on carrying. That's why in the junior schools, we tell them, no, wash your hands in this way. Uh, when somebody asks, uh, ask permission from somebody, if you, have, if you want to enter into a house or a room, if you are to take something from your teacher, if you want to read, ask in this way, Ham log beta, aap aise bologe. Madam, may I come in, sir? May I come in? Can I have this? Huh? Will you please help me in this way? Huh? The soft words like please, thank you. We constantly, because that will develop the social and emotional development will take place. Once that goes on, then the cognitive the, the development of the brain, the cognitive development. Remember the studies, the, the, the development of education, that the, the development of remembering, understanding, analyzing, so on and so forth will go on. Eventually, will lead to language and literacy, literary development. Once children are able to catch the things and keep them and retain them in their mind, then slowly, slowly the language, those inhibitions that the teachers were having in the initial stage that children will not understand, they will understand. They will develop the language. Everything is scientifically made. Only thing is that we have to implement them in the best proper way. So the language, literacy development, and you, uh, many may ask questions, sir, is it like that, that it goes in this way? You, you yourself do the experiment and you will find in your classroom. That child who came in the first day of the school, uh, on the 150th day, that child has completely transformed by your help. So that is how it happens, you know. Then so, uh, then we'll make them go, uh, understand the aesthetics and cultural development, know the nation, the traditions, the culture, and which will eventually lead to positive learning habits and it will go on. So NCF comprises of 13 curricular goals for foundational stages uh, divided into six domains mentioned over. So these are the six domains, uh, 13 like these domains are there, but for the foundational st uh, stage, these six domains, six areas of development, needs, these goals we have to achieve. Uh, we have to go and achieve. And you have to be a very, very smart teacher uh, in order to make sure that the children get this. Of course, 
we need a lot of help from the parent side at this particular stage also. So school alone cannot do it. Let's move a little forward and let's see what else we have. Okay. So here we go. Sorry, just a minute. Just a minute. Something is going. So this then, the six domains are mentioned over here. Approach to language. Early literacy and numeracy is very important. Again, children should be able to count and children should be able to read and write. So approach to language is important. Reading and writing in a child's home language. Medium of instruction, how, the, how it will first reading and writing in child's home language. What is home language? Is it the mother tongue? Okay, maybe sometimes it is the mother tongue. Sometimes it may be the language in which they are speaking in the house itself. It, it's not always necessary that it has to be mother tongue. Maybe suppose a Bengali people, a, a, a Bengali family is staying somewhere in Tamil Nadu and they are used to talking in Tamil. So that becomes the home language. Concept of reading and writing is initially developed through the home language whenever possible. So home language is not only limited to mother tongue, it can be beyond mother tongue also, provided in which particular area the people are staying and which particular language they are using, irrespective of their caste, creed, religion, whatever, whatever. whatever. So that thing should be, because this is, see, this is a very scientific approach, you know. The language in which the child is, is used to learn uh, listening, uh, that language the child will pick up first. Medium of instruction in child's home language, in the initial stages, uh, the medium of language should be the child's home language. Okay, Since children learn concept most rapidly and deeply in their home language, the primary medium of instruction would optimally be the child's home language or the mother tongue, whichever we are discussing, or the or he, is, he or she is familiar with a particular language in the foundational stage. So, mother tongue is not limited to it, the language that they know it. Now, uh, in many, uh, in various trainings, I have, I have also faced this question that, sir, a board is telling that, uh, NEP 2020 is telling that we cannot teach in English in our English medium school. We have to teach in the local languages. Now, how are we going to do that? Okay, it's not difficult. We will be definitely teaching them English. Because our schools are, uh, most of those schools which are English medium schools, that is where parents send their children to learn English. But along with the English, the bilingual, the bilingual, the bilingual teaching and learning process should go on and it really helps. So there is no such hard and fast rule that if we teach in this particular language, in Eastern, in Eastern, both should go simultaneously. If we continuously teach in the same language, then maybe they will find it difficult in the higher classes to uh, know the next language. But bilingual should go on. That is my uh, suggestion. I often give this to others. Exposed to multilingual or oral languages. Children should be exposed to be exposed to and immersed in multiple oral languages, not only on written and oral languages. From the early stage, schools will aim to ensure that presence of teachers and parents so that the, that at least two or probably three languages present with their ch children on a regular basis. Yes, that is important. Like in most of our schools, we do have this. Children can speak in the local language. Children can speak in Hindi also. And of course, children can speak in English. Like in West Bengal, if you see, Bengali is the language that the children know. They speak in Hindi also properly. And they speak in English. And the same thing in other states also. So at least three oral languages they should know very clearly. Okay. The concept of reading writing should develop in the, and becoming independent reader and writer. Once the concept of reading and writing is developed in the child's child in the home language used with additional scripts can gradually introduce them. The aim is to have an independent reader and writer within the child by the age of eight. So by the age of eight, the child should be able to read and write in a particular language which he or she is learning right from the beginning along with two other languages. At least if not two, if not, uh, sorry, two, if not to one language, they should be able to read and write. So two languages children should be very, 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 very uh, efficient with those two languages. They should be fluent with those two languages. This is something they should be efficient and they should be fluent and there should be an efficacy in that learning process also. This is the thing that this is one of our approach towards the language teaching and it is the duty of teachers to make sure that this happens. Again, this is a suggestion. You will customize according to your needs and means. So that was the language part. Okay. Two basic things that the children should know at the foundation. One is the numeracy approach and the other is the literary approach. So that was the language part and all. What about the numeracy? Because it is it is also found that children up to the age of five are not able to 
calculate, are not able to solve problems, mathematical or arithmetical problems. And we have an alarming statistics for that also. So that base needs to be made very strong. So adoption of various approaches to teach mathematics to students in a playful way. Everything should go in a playful way. Jabar dasti karke kuch nahi hoga. But tell tell me padhai kijiye. Ananda jayega bachche ke andar. Developing mathematical abstract ideas, concepts through concrete experiences. English language teaching and all these things. We have a particular part on it. Okay. So develop mathematical abstract ideas. Let them see the things. That's why in the classroom we say, no, leave all the things. I have a very good training program on this also on numeracy. How children can learn numeracy at a very early stage. Okay. Let them see the things. Let them understand it. Let them feel it. Let them see stones. Let them see shapes, irregular shapes, regular shapes, things within the school. Uh, let them find out uh, which matches with what. Connecting mathematics learning with children, real life and prior knowledge. Uh, if they have seen that their mother is doing something in the house in certain way, that, in, that, that knowledge, if the child has within the mind, he will try to do it same in the school. You give different, different objects to the child, tell, tell them to settle down in a proper way. He will find that from, either from smaller to bigger they are putting or bigger to smaller. This, this happens with life, you know. Mathematics as a problem-solving tool, it will be used. How to solve the problem with the help of mathematics. Using mathematical talks, communications and reasoning. When the teacher will teach, they will teach in this way. This is a problem. This is addition. Add this with this. Subtract this with this. Take away this from the other one. You know, methods are there like that. Developing positive attitude towards learning mathematics. One of the biggest challenges that we face is with mathematics. Today in the morning, I was having, I was conducting a CBSE uh, training program in a particular school at Dhanbar. And often this question I ask many teachers, the why, why is math, to the mathematics, why our children are so scared of mathematics? In spite of having so many mathematics brain across the country, we have the best uh, higher institutes, we have the IITs, the IIMs and everything. But still, why the concept of mathematics, why mathematics is so deadly to our students? Why they are so scared? And yet they are always moving with the mathematics book with them. You will see throughout the day, uh, in the school also, they are with the mathematics book. Uh, uh, outside also, they are moving with the math. Why? They say, what, what, uh, why this fear psychosis there? But unfortunately, no answers were given. Everybody was telling, sir, the things are not taught in the proper. Why it is not taught? Okay, whatever has happened and happened, let us start again with the beginning. So first of all, the areas of mathematics which will be learned in the earlier years were numbers and relations. What are the numbers and what is the relation? One, two, three, four, uh, how one is related to three, uh, one is three times more, or what is this, or what is less, that is it. The basic mathematical operations, addition, subtraction, the basic ones, the addition and subtraction. Shapes and, and sp uh, spatial understanding, the shape, which is a uh, which is a regular shape one, which is an irregular shape, how much space will be taken by like this particular shape uh, material compared to the other one. Okay, that they under, and they understand by the by the age of five, six children to understand where to keep a large thing, where to keep a small thing, where to keep a long thing. Okay, like that. Patterns and designs they understand. Yes, which will come after this? Uh, before this, measurements. If you tell them this is long, this is short, this is fat, thick, this is thin, this is broad, this is narrow, we have to show them. And that is what they will know. And then eventually the data handling will come, which will come in the later stage. Okay. These are the areas of mathematics for early years. That is what the NCF is telling. Of course, you have your own ways and means uh, to customize according to the need of the children and you can do it. But keeping the basics within yourself. Organizing content and learning. The 11th point is sensorily engaging encourages children to examine and explore using all their senses. Sensorily, eh? the sight, the hearing, the touch, the feeling. So encourages children to examine and examine using all their senses by seeing, okay, then we, why we put oh, illustrations in the book so much for the children? Why we put so much objects in the junior section, in the fundamental studies in front of them? So that they will see and seeing is believing, you know, the more they will see, those images will get uh, uh, this printed on their brain. They get envisaged on their brain and they will remain over there. They, the imprints will remain over there and the retaining capacity will be more and more. That is why 
Uh, it is done in that way. Drawn largely from the context of the child. What the child wants to see, how they want to feel it. Let the freedom be with them. Cater to different needs and levels of the children. Okay. <laughs> what is their need? They may draw a flower. Somebody may draw, draw an irregular figure. Some child may go on jumping and dancing in the classroom in order to show some sort of his qualities. So let the need be for them and let us cater them. Let us observe them. You know, the fundamental stage is a very, very difficult stage. And I always, I always give tremendous respect to those teachers who are teaching in the junior sections in the schools. Often in the schools, we call them as junior teachers. They are not junior teachers. They are the builders. They are the ones who are taking the pain to make these small children understand who come with absolutely nothing. So it is very, very difficult to teach in the, 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 the lower classes, the primary and pre-primary classes. Those who are doing it, they are doing a wonderful job. Emphasis on local materials made by teachers and children. Yes, let the children know their own surroundings. Let the children know their own surroundings. So that is why the local language, the local things, the local materials, okay, the local history and the local geography is needed to be taught to the children. That's why sometimes we take them to the local temple or to the mosque and from outside, inside, we try to show them as much as possible. We show them the fields, we show them the roads. Huh? Because that is the, look. first of all, they should know, even the traditions and culture of the locality. Print rich environment with, read, uh, with a range of reading materials, stories, poems, pictures, books, okay. Rich environment means the illustration should be colorful so that they will see it and by seeing it they will believe it. All grades standard 1 and 2 textbook language maths will have environmental awareness. Everything should be dealt with the environment also because nowadays environment plays a very crucial role because if the environment is perfect, everything is perfect. That's why you are putting so much emphasis on environment. Whenever we are teaching them any language or maths, uh, somewhere or other environment will come into action. Okay. Awareness should be integrated into their mind because environment at any cost cannot be damaged. Now, what type of what type of what type of uh, contents you should choose for the foundational stage? Content for language, maths, and art. We can have worksheets and workbooks. Definitely, children's literature will be there, which is already CBSA, NCRT has come out with the book. It is available. Uh, you can download the book. Uh, Audiovisual materials are there, flashcards are there, and of course, your own ways of innovations. Your own innovation should also be there to make children understand and know. And only a teacher knows his or her students and they can come out with the best. But we should have ways of organizing the content. We can have project-based approach, story-based approach. Storytelling is another wonderful teaching learning aid. Wonderful. If you go on telling stories to the children well, with from your heart's content, they just listen like anything. Theme-based approach you can take. Huh? Electric approach uh, is, uh, and approaches. Different types of approaches are there. It all depends upon how you will take it. Okay. You can use materials. You can use uh, this uh, special uh, teaching learning materials are there which are available uh, in the within the ecology, within the system. And you can, it's not necessary that you have to uh, import this thing from there and that in order to make, no, 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 small, small things, simple things, the, the, the user, uh, use from the waste materials can also turn out to be teaching aids for the children. The bottom line is that the information has to be transferred in the best possible way into the minds of the children. That is what the national curriculum framework talks about. Sorry. Excuse me. Assessment for further learning. What are the different types of assessments we should do? Teaching learning process should go on. Identify the needs. Purpose is what? To identify the needs, the preferences, the interests of the child. Okay. And development changes that should give teacher an insight into the learning achievement of the child. The teacher should have a total insight and foresight about it. Uh, the tools, there's a systematic observation and assessment. Observe and do it. Okay. Analyze the artifacts and uh, artifacts. Completion of artwork, activity seats, collection of artifacts from the field trips. Let the children see them. And, and it's a continue. If you, if you see this upon, okay. Eliciting the evidence from the child's learning, analyzing and interpreting the evidences and acting upon them. So 
these are the ways by which we can go for assessment. It should not be like a test with marks and all. Please, for God's sake, don't do it. Just see, uh, go for a critical approach towards it. See how much they are learning and what are the things that they are lacking as the time passes on so that we can go on uh, in them and reacting them again and again. Should be reliable. Achha, assessment consideration for foundations or whatever. It, there should be reliable source of information should be there. Nothing should be unreliable and imaginary. Should allow for a diversity in the children in learning their own. Should have should uh, should not contribute to any additional burden for the child and the teacher. Yes, sometimes you know we have this type of a feeling among ourselves also that in order to make our schools to be quite different, we say that our schools are quite different from others, and we try to put those things into the mind of the children, which for that time being they are they it is not needed for by them. Many schools have a habit of saying this way. You know, the students of my school of standard five they can solve problems of standard nine at one go. This is a wrong approach. Absolutely, absolutely wrong. Even many parents also boast about the my son. Oh, he is such a brilliant one. He's in standard three, but he can at any moment he can uh, challenge a standard seven student. If this feeling is there, it's a wrong feeling. Don't do anything additional and unnecessary that will burden the child and the teacher. Okay, one or two child prodigies we may get. That's a different story altogether. But it is not for same for all the students. That is why if you see the NCRT textbook, they are made so meticulously, so well prepared. They are age appropriate and brain appropriate. As much the brain can take and as according to the age, the books are. The same way it should go on. Don't do anything extra, unnecessary things which will burden the child as well as the teacher. Something that will only help the child to enjoy. Documenting and, coming, uh, and communicating of the assessment. Teacher narrative summaries should be there. And holistic progress cards. We all know about the holistic progress card, the 360 degree progress report cards, which we discussed in, in the last minute. Those things are will be also there to assess the child. The main thing is the main, uh, the, the bottom line is, or the punch line is that whether the child is developing, understanding, and retaining whatever is taught to the child. Forget about the marks and all those things. They will come uh, as the time will pass. But first thing is that retention in the brain. If they are able to retain, there will be less dropouts in the school. All are directly proportional to each other. The pedagogy, how it should be done? What type of pedagogy we should have? Important considerations for planning, uh, punch body, five-step learning, progress, different type of instructions. Okay, scaffolding, general, uh, gradual release from time to time, whatever we will teach them. At one go, we should not finish this. So planning for the teacher. The teacher has to do the planning. The children blossom when there is a positive relationship between the teacher, family, and community. In the beginning also, we discussed about this, that there should be a very good rapport among the teachers and the students. Okay, the days are gone when teachers used to have, hmm, the days are gone when that teachers used to wear those thick spectacles uh, uh, and they used to just, just look in a very tough way towards the student. Those days are gone. It will not work anymore. In our time, we used to have like this, but now it's not. Right. There should be a very good relationship between the teacher, the student, the parents. Then only development will take place. I know sometimes parents turn out to be very, very irritating also for the school. But then, you know, one of the one of the greatest quality of education is that you should have the quality of tolerance within you. Learning through play. Beginning, we say. Children enjoy learning through several ways. Talking, listening, using toys, painting. So pedagogy should be made according to that. Uh, learning through play. Four block approach for teaching. Literacy, instruction, mathematics. Okay, strategy for literature and numeracy has to be prepared. And you go on using them. Creating classroom norms with children around self-discipline and classroom behavior. Creating positive classroom culture. Not only we should limit ourselves towards the textbooks and study materials, but about life also. In the beginning, I told you, you know, we are there to make them good human beings. So positive self-discipline in the classroom, good behavior, good understanding, all these things are also needed. It's uh, it's very easy to say all these things, you know. But when it comes to practice, then only you'll understand. We understand how difficult it is. But then again, nothing is difficult. Step by step, we have to approach. We have to have that positive thinking. We have to have that, that uh, tolerance capacity within ourselves. And eventually, we'll find that children do learn. Plus, a little bit of love and care and attention and respect is needed from our side for our beautiful children. And because if they are there, then we are there. If they are not there, then what are we for?
ऑर्गेनाइजिंग टाइम 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 की बात है ना एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट हाउ यू मैनेज योर टाइम एंड टू डेज इन द टू डेज वर्ल्ड ऑफ टीचिंग इट इज कमिंग लाइक अ टर्न की प्रोजेक्ट वर्ल्ड यू नो टर्न की टर्न की नो लाइक लाइक इन द कमर्शियल वर्ल्ड वी है टर्न की प्रोजेक्ट विद इन दिस टाइम यू हैव टू डू द वर्क इफ यू डू विद इन दिस टाइम it's okay if you finish it before time you will get benefit of the extra time that you have the extra time that you are not using it and if you do after the given time then you will be penalized so like that the in our world also the teaching learning process is coming in that way your principal has given you a task to do within that time frame you have to do it if you finish it before that it's very good if you do it after that it's of no use no matter how beautiful work you have done they say that work done on time is much better and much more appreciated than work done several hours later so this needs to be taken into consideration so to prepare and organize activities that are play based but guided and structured supporting language development with socio emotional development this should be uh, organizing the time you have to make sure that everything goes according to the time independent activities for the children should be given circle time story time concept time pre numeracy time uh, for small groups for large groups uh, more the illustrative weekly routines for class 6 to 8 should be made annual school calendar we should prepare according to that we will go on doing our work and all so time management is very important and you will find that once you have managed, once you have started it doing it within the time you have finished it also sometimes we get scared sir will, will you be able to do it in that way will be able to do it in this way but eventually at the end of the day you will find that if you are doing your work with heart and soul then everything comes in the right way plus we have to have that positive approach that uh, feeling of doing the right thing and that passion and the compassion for doing the work additional critical areas some more critical areas which ncf has pointed out both for the teachers and the for the student early identification of children who are who are at risk for development delays and disabilities is very crucial for timely intervention yes you will find the junior school teachers over here i don't call them junior school teacher for the for the understanding i am telling right right now they in the, in the in the very first month when the child enters the classroom the first month second month third by the time the child reaches the fifth and may, the teachers get used to the children and they can understand and they can find out what are what are the things that the children are having and what are the their disabilities and that they and that they communicate with the parents and the parents also feel happy when they are told that okay these are the drawbacks so you can go for them so role of the role at the foundational stage of the institution observe the child to understand the child's functioning record their daily work share the concern with the parents refer the child to an appropriate medical professional if it is wrong like my wife who is also a teacher for the last 16 to 17 years okay and she is a very very famous teacher of this particular area she works with dab public school and often whenever she noticed certain certain uh, limitations with the children immediately she informed the parents many of you are also doing not only this i am giving example because it is in the, my house and i have seen it that's why all of you are if a child is not able to see the board properly it is the duty of the teacher to report to the parents to meet an optometrist optometrist or a, or a ophthalmologist to see that the child's eyes are in perfect condition if there is an attention deficiency then it is needed to consult with a, a particular particular uh, consultant so that that assistance and deficiency is reduced okay and the child comes in the right direction role of teacher learn as much as possible about the child observe the child sit with the child talk with the child go set, setting goals for the child in their realist for their realistic achievement okay these many children i will convert them into this this, this from this to this like that make information as concrete as possible try to get information write them down note them down consult with principal of the school and then have a discussion with the parents also sensitize other children of the situation yes some children may have may have such certain spe uh, special abilities you know children with special abilities we say huh? uh, i don't want to use the other word because it really hurts me you know so and those normal children who are there sometimes they make fun of these children so then we have to sensitize these children and to tell them look this child has these limitations you should you should have a empathy for him uh, you should feel for him or her don't make fun of him. because children don't know na if a child works in a different way in the school they will definitely they don't understand it but once we make them understand then they do so these are the additional critical areas where apart from teaching learning we have to go for ensuring physical and emotional safety of the children very very important 
in the school for providing a secure environment. All parents send their children to schools, good schools, to standard school because they feel that my child will be safe and secured over there. That's very important. So adult supervision is always needed. No physical violence or corporal punishment should be given to the children at all. Again, we all are against this. Adults must not bully, harass, or intimate children even by implication or covertly. Yes, sometimes, you know, yes, it used to sometimes uh, in the schools also, in the in the old world, sometimes teachers used to hit uh, very badly. We used to say uh, that, hey, that the hitting is not, uh, but actually it will have a physical damage. It can have a permanent physical damage on the child's body and the mind. That's why we have to, the senior children should be told not to bully the junior teenager. Even the teachers should also be told time to time not to bully the children or harass them or do anything. Teachers must intervene in in, in, in inappropriate manner, teachers must intervene in appropriate in an appropriate manner. This actually, this typing is not like that. In a pro appropriate manner, behavior. Zero tolerance of child sexual abuse. Yes, the good touches and the bad touches should be also told to the children. Zero tolerance over there. Many people have this habit. Yes, teachers and all other adults must be aware of child sexual abuse. POSCO Act should be implemented in the schools because a child is a is a valuable human resource for the nation. Under any circumstances, none of us have the right to abuse a child in any form. Connections to the pre-primary stages, what are the different connections should be there? Gradual shift from development domains to curricular. From first, initially, what we will do? We'll go for the development, creating the child, making the child understand the human nature, human values. And from there, slowly, slowly, from the development domains, from the development areas, we will move to the curricular areas, to the subjects, to the stages. So preparatory stage will be like this. Gentle move from child, child from pedagogical exploration to more formal learning. Okay, that is with the books with the notebooks, with pen, with pencil, begin to move from concrete sensorial experience to more abstract ideas and constant. Simply feeling and touching through this way is not. Now more application of the brain. Assessment through some formal tasks in addition to structured observation. Step by step, we will go for this. Okay. So first, make the child understand, make the child feel, make the child feel, uh, uh, take the things in by heart and then let the child learn step by step. So 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 curricular and pedagogical design necessities, the continuity and the change across the stages. Every stage, something new is done to make sure that it continues for the next level of understanding. Creating supportive uh, uh, ecosystem for learning. Ensure an appropriate environment of learning. It should be joyful. It should be children should be happy. There should be a feeling. There should be an aura of happiness, an aura of uh, innovation, an aura. Uh, if an innovative school is there, the children will always see something new. And of course, that suitable teacher people ratio should be maintained according to the age and according to the uh, according to the age and according to the needs. Uh, in a class of 40 children, if you give one teacher, it may become very difficult. Although in the higher classes we do it, but junior classes it's not possible. Make sure that the teachers require the conductive teaching environment, culture, and facilities. The teacher should be given the freedom to teach properly. They should have that autonomy. So then only they, they will be passionate. The basic ad, uh, role of academic and administrative function is what is our principal should contribute in shaping and supporting and empowering the culture of the school. That is the duty of the principal. Ensure that the presence of adequate teachers are there. Role of parents and community, parents and family as co-partners with school to help the child in learning and development and leveraging technology, use of technology is very important. We just cannot forget technology. Of course, technology is not everything, not 100%, but if it is 50%, then 50% human nature is, human qualities are also involved, involved over there. But we cannot neglect technology, okay? So these are the various domains. Uh, these are the various ecosystems, support system by which the in, uh, education will move forward. And remember, respected teachers, this national curriculum framework for the foundational stage, stage will be an integral part of the larger national curriculum framework. The foundational stage has now come out. Others which are currently under development will also come. The middle school, the high school, the secondary school, it will, those curriculum frameworks are being prepared by NCRT. Very soon we will get them. Step by step we will get them. And this uh, NEP 2020 implementation will also go step by step. It will not go in one go. Uh, throughout the country, CBSC is conducting workshops. Today also there was a workshop at Rachi. Again, it will be held in other parts of the country. 
And through this workshop, you will also get to know more about how the implementation will take place. So this is just the basic one, the foundational stage, other stages are coming. So with this, we come to the end of this seminar webinar. Uh, my, uh, my phone number and my email ID is there given to you. If you think you want to add something more, you are always welcome. If you want to give more information to me, which I can use it for the development of uh, for teachers from in other parts of the country, and your contribution will be highly accepted. I always read emails. I get plenty of emails every day. I read them. I try to answer as much as possible. And I also take the help of all the teachers across the country as much as possible to make sure that we come out with good and meaningful training programs or learning learning programs so that we can learn. Because for us, learning is a never-ending story. Okay, For us teachers, those who are in the teaching learning profession, for us, learning is a never-ending story. Thank you very much. Now, Jitendra, uh, uh, if you are there, if participants have anything to say, they are most welcome to say, sir. And definitely we'll also listen to them. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I think we can take a few questions and answers. Definitely, yes, definitely, sir. definitely. Most welcome. So we will uh, participants can raise hand. We will unmute one by one. If you have any question, definitely, sir. So Rashmi, ma'am, you can uh, unmute yourself. And one more thing is the process has just begun. Okay. It will go in a long way in making our students uh, pace very, very strong. But it will only happen with the help of teachers, like great teachers like you all. Rashmi Kulshrestra, ma'am. Rashmi Kulshrestra, ma'am, has raised her hand. Sapna, madam, has raised her hand. Ranjana, madam, if you have anything to say, please, uh, so that uh, we get more ideas from you all also. Okay, it is not only limited from this side, it should be a dialogue. Uh, all of us should join hands together too. Uh, somebody is saying that they didn't get the previous webinar certificate. So, Jitin sir, yes. please. So, yes, certificates will be dispatched on by Monday. And uh, so, Kanya, can you share the link for attendance for this session so that we can combinedly send the certificates for both the sessions? Uh, yes, Jitin sir, I've already shared the link. I'll share again. And uh, I have shared everything. We have also given one question that they have attended the last session of 11th October. So they just have to do yes or no. So if they have okay. attended that session, they will get the certification by Monday. Great. Thank you. So quickly, we will take a few questions. I have unmuted all those who have raised hand. Anybody who wants to speak, please. Yes. Anybody, if you want to, you want to say something, you want to have, uh, then it, you are most welcome because your comments are Hello. very important. Yes, ma'am. Please. Uh, sir, one question is there. Uh -huh. uh, we are talking about the uh, activities, no? Uh, like children that, yes. should uh, get the knowledge right, through right. the different activities. Right, but exactly. one problem is there, we have a particular syllabus for all the classes. Right. And we have to finish that syllabus within a particular time period. Right. So Correct. what can we uh, do for that? Madam, Madam, what you will do, you just align your activities with the syllabus. Right. Yes, we do have a syllabus. We have to. This is this is the most unfortunate, unfortunate thing that we have to pass through. We have a syllabus, and uh, to be very to have a practical approach, you have to complete. But please align your activities. Suppose if you are teaching a particular part of mathematics in the junior school, okay, then you make your activities which align with the syllabus. Are you getting me? What I am trying to say? Okay. Yes, yes. You align your uh, your syllabus with the activities because if you do the activities, then children will understand it in much better way compared to the normal uh, pen and paper work. Okay, you do it, you will get it, ma'am. It's not very difficult, but yes, time consuming. It is time consuming. It yes, takes yes. Time it is time consuming. Time. Sometimes we have yes, to just run after the syllabus. Yes, yes, that and, we understand. And we want to do many things, but we can't do that in the exactly, uh, exactly. Time. What you are saying is absolutely so. Then that planning is needed. No, that's why NCF is telling. No, first plan your pedagogy, plan okay. your teaching learning process, and automatically it will come out. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am Remy from uh, Dindikal. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, yes, Remy, ma'am, please. Yes, sir. Uh, this is regarding the age limit. You have said three years to be admitted. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. As for the Tamil Nadu rules, they are telling that we will we should have it 
the same four years like okay that 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 is negotiable okay that is negotiable uh, ncrt government is saying that at the age of 3 children should be brought back uh, brought to school at the anganwadi yeah. stage or the but even if it is four ma'am no issue at all no issue at all that is always flexible flexibility is there with nep 2020 so that if you can do according to age also according, is it okay yes yes, yes. that, that one, is not no issue at all no issue at all for is what we have done what shall we do with that pardon ma'am the previous admission last year and year before we have admitted let them go let them go as usual don't don't, don't do anything with them okay henceforth okay. henceforth when you will admit then you can admit at the age of 4 or at the age of 3 no problem what okay. admission you have already taken let them go as it is don't do anything with them don't manipulate them okay let okay. them go in the normal way okay, okay. Yes, thank you sir okay right good evening sir uh, very good evening ma'am Uh, I'm Jayshri Mishra from Saps Ahmed Nagar. Okay. So there is one thing that I wanted to uh, actually tell everyone that uh, we yeah. are organizing a book review kind of thing in our school. Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. Very good. So Very we good. have decided that uh, each child will uh, read a book and Fine. then he Very will good. give us review about that book. Okay. Fantastic. That's very good. Very yeah. innovative thing you have done. You are doing it. Very, yes, very yes. good, madam. Please go forward with it. Yes, very good. Sir. Very good. I just wanted to tell everyone yes, so yes. that if they want yes. to try it, they can also try can. this thing Definitely. in their school it's, it's as well. This is what we all want, you know. This is what learning yes. is all about. Sometimes I learn from you. Sometimes you learn from me. That's what education is all about. Fantastic. Yes. I appreciate your approach, ma'am. Very good. Very good. It was not my idea. Actually, it was my principal's idea. She oh, only okay. suggested us this thing. haan ji but okay. i just wanted to convey this thing in this okay, platform right, so right. that Very everyone good. can um, do that and everyone can um, you know do something use with this use that and utilize that for their children yes, yes, very good so ma'am right. please convey my best wishes to your principal ma'am for coming out sure, with such sure. an innovative idea okay tell sure. her, mr sen has uh, conveyed good wishes to her okay and of sure. course thank for, you so much you also for bringing us this information over here wonderful thank you so much. we need it is my like pleasure sir thank you so much thank you Uh, sir, I think uh, we are running out of time. Okay, Quickly, sir. Then, uh, then I will remove myself. Uh, one last question, so. and then we will wrap. Anybody else who wants to ask any question or share any thoughts? Hello. Yes. Yes, Prabha, ma'am. Yes, yes Prabha, ma'am. I am from Himachal Pradesh, from a rural school, and it was really very good to hear and attend this meeting. And Thank born, you, brought up in West Bengal. तो बांग्ला खूब बालों को नहीं जानी एंड आई एम रियली ओह बाबा बाबा इट वाज वेरी नाइस हाँ बट टू दिस सर आई वुड लाइक टू टेक सम ऑफ योर सजेशंस मे बी थ्रू मेल और फोन लेटर डेफिनेटली मैम डेफिनेटली डेफिनेटली आई एम ऑलवेज देयर आई एम ऑलवेज देयर थैंक यू एंड आई हैप्पी पूजा हॉलीडेज फॉर यू पे� Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Need your blessings. Need your blessings always. Okay. okay. But this I is, got this is the lot of blessings of through this webinar. I would like to start my own school here from the foundational. So all these okay. points will help me a lot. Thank you so much. Okay, wonderful, ma'am. Please, thank please, you. and if you need no, no, me, no, no. you are. I'm always there for you. Okay. Thank there. you. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And so I also much. thank you the Goel Publishers also for making this. one a very staying in such a far place and they were always supportive to my school thank you okay thank you ma'am thank nice you so much thank, thank, thank you for giving me this opportunity right yes thank you okay. so sir uh, i would again like to thank you and thank all our participants who have been patiently waiting here mm -hmm. listening to you thanks to everyone here thanks to special thanks to you and special thanks to goel brothers prakashan and team for uh, once again organizing this webinar with this we will end the webinar and we'll come back again with the third webinar which is i think yes. on 18th 18th yes that will be also very interesting when we will yes. have a discussion about it okay and thanks everybody for your patience listening and everything all the respected teachers for your views and of course thanks to goel brothers for giving me the opportunity to interact with you all thank you very much good night thank you take care